Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of All the Mod 6 with Wizards Game. Today we're going to be getting into some resourceful bees. I've been quite busy um, doing some things here in the overworld, uh, and I'm, I apologize for not being able to upload any new episodes in a while, but um, I do have a full-time job, so that definitely is going to take precedence over this. But I definitely will continue to try to keep... Um, getting more episodes out as soon as I can. And with that, the other thing that we're going to get into today is we're going to try to do some more Mahal stuff. We're going to have to get some things from Mahal in order to set up our auto smelting process that we want to do with our crazy high fortune and the nifty technique that we learned about using the Scorching Heat Enchant. So let's get into it. All right, guys. So before we begin, there's something I'm going to have to do here, and that is I'm going to have to address a mistake that I made in the previous episode. And that mistake was uh, involving one of our new Paxels that we created here. Um, now, I went ahead and created a second one uh, just because I was kind of playing around, experimenting with some of the different ingredients for this. And you notice this one, this one is actually has a little bit higher damage. Um, but what happened in the last episode uh, was that when, when I put auto smelt on this and then I added fortune to it, the auto smelt just sort of magically disappeared and I didn't even notice that. And I'm going to demonstrate um, basically what happened here. So in our, in our last episode, we had put auto smelt on first and then we took our fortune enchant and we applied that and I just grabbed it here and I didn't even pay attention. But look at this. So on the left, we can see auto smelt is applied, but if we apply fortune here, the auto smelt just magically disappears. That's so weird. I don't know if that's a bug or intentional, but that is uh, something that happened in the last episode. Um, and I didn't, uh, I didn't even notice it. So my, my sincere apologies on that. I, I never like to, uh, I never like it when I give the wrong information about something. And making a mistake like that um, just was terrible. So what I'm going to try to do here, though, is I'm going to try to apply this fortune enchant with a pedestal just so, just so we can finish our testing with the auto smelt. So I want to see if it's possible to add it. So as you can see here, even with the, um, the pedestal anvil, we, we can't add fortune when it has auto smelt on it. So... That does appear to be either a bug or maybe it is intentional. I'm not sure. Uh, so we can't, in this case, at least with this particular item, add fortune to uh, something with auto smelt on it. So that's that, guys. I just wanted to make sure that I addressed that. And uh, I do apologize again for that. So, yeah. So the next thing I want to cover today is um, resourceful bees. Now, I've actually made a lot of progress on the resourceful bees just kind of when I've been able to play some here and there. Um, you know, it, whenever I work on a new episode, it takes about mm, five or six hours to kind of go from beginning to end to actually make the video and, and edit the video and then get it published and everything. So I didn't have that kind of time, but I did have some time to work on some things just to kind of get them running. So I'm going to explain what I did and how I did that. So the first thing that I did to get into Resourceful Bees was I just set up this kind of little... Um, kind of temporary beehive area. And, and all I've got in here are just two very normal bees. And what I actually used to get the honey out of this was I used this bee smoker and I used a scraper. And so if I uh, show you how I used those things, uh, it's, real, it's real simple. So you can see here in the hive that we've got some honey kind of uh, showing in the holes. That's an indication that the honey is full. We can also see that the honey level on the comb is a five. So that means that the honey is ready to be harvested. So in order to keep the bees from getting aggroed, we have to smoke the hive first. And then we can use our scraper on it to get the honey out. Um, so that's kind of the first step. Now, I didn't have any honey at all when I started this process. So this is what I had to do in order to get a little bit of honey. Now, once I had enough honey, I was able to make a mystical agriculture seed. Uh, let's just take a look at that real quick. So there is actually a honey seed in mystical agriculture, and that will give you honey essence. And then, of course, you can actually make honey combs with that. 
But in order to get the seed for the sky, you have to make this. And so I also had to use this centrifuge here uh, with some bottles in it. And all I did was just throw the honeycombs in here. And um, it will output honey bottles um, and also some a little bit of beeswax. Um, so I wasn't... So, you know, one of the things that you have to have a lot of in order to progress to the high level apiaries, and let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, so in order to get like the tier four apiary, which is really what we want. So all I really wanted to do was be able to skip ahead. I didn't want to use a tier one or tier two or three apiary. I just wanted to go straight for the tier four. So in order to do that, you have to set up kind of an auto craft to be able to, to get it. And you need a lot of stuff. Um, so you're going to need a block of honey. You're going to have to be able to make tier all the tiers of apiaries. And you're also going to need the tiers of beehives. So you'll have to get the tier 4 beehive, the tier 3. But as you can see here, you also need honey blocks. Um, we also need beeswax blocks. And we need regular beeswax. And then uh, the tier 1 apiary can be made with grass and any kind of bee nest that you can find in the world. Um, so in order to get a whole lot of beeswax really quickly, um, I used a technique that's, I think, pretty commonly used, but all you can do is, uh, you can set up a villager trading outpost, like the one I've set here, and you could put a, any kind of a bee nest in front of them, and it will transform them into a beekeeper, and then you can trade emeralds for blocks of beeswax, beeswax or honeycombs. And so I did a whole lot of trading with these guys because, you know, I've got tons of emeralds. And that's how I was able to get a lot of beeswax really quickly. Meanwhile, my honey seeds have been over here growing all this time. And I had a whole lot of uh, these honey plants here before I kind of switched this up. And so now you can see that I've got over 4 million, 4.7 million honeycomb uh, here in storage. And that's because mostly from the mystical ag agriculture plant. So we, we will need a lot of that. And we're setting up the auto craft. We, we're going to want to use a consistent type of honey for our auto crafting. So that's why I did that. Now, the second thing that I needed was um, grass. You have to have a lot of grass to make, um, you know, each of the, the, or to make the tier four apiary. And so I had to set up a mystical agriculture seed to get uh, nature's essence here or nature essence and with that we can make grass and so i set up an auto craft to do that so got a ton of that and then made uh, a lot of grass and i actually made a, quite a bit of extra of this because we can make a lot of different things with it including vines and um you know mushrooms and carrots and um, kelp and some other things that we're going to need later on, potatoes, apples. So it's pretty handy to have this uh, essence uh, just in case we ever need it to do to autocraft something. So the, the, the next thing I needed also was honey blocks. And in order to get honey blocks, um, we would have to do some honey processing at a pretty high scale because we'd need quite a bit of it to get the tier four apiary. So I went ahead and crafted this guy, which is the tier three centrifuge. And if we look inside here, we can see that it does require power and it's got two modes where it will output the liquid honey and it will also just output uh, honey blocks. Um, it'll output uh, or, or it'll output the ores from these things. So in this case, I've already kind of got um, I've got two apiaries set up here, two tier four apiaries, and they both only have diamond and emerald bees in them at this point. And what we get from those bees is just diamond and emerald ore that we will have to process. But we get quite a bit of it, even with the tier three centrifuge. Now we're gonna wanna get to the higher level uh, centrifuges, and there are some higher levels here. There's a tier four, there's a tier five, and then there's a creative one. So. I did set up the auto craft for the tier four um, centrifuge, and I just want to show you guys how much how much resources it takes to craft this. So if I click on this, it, it's going to take 35 of these centrifuge uh, casings, and just to make one centrifuge. So if I click start on this, you can see how much how many diamonds it takes: 918,540 diamonds. Uh, it takes 918,000 gold ingots. Uh, it takes a little bit of netherite. And yeah, so 
and so you know we'd have to have a lot of diamonds in order to make this i didn't have enough to make this at the time that i made this so i really cranked up the speed on my diamond processing using mystical agriculture and now i definitely have enough um i've got plenty of diamonds and i had to do that by adding more diamond plants around in different places to try to speed up that process and i also did that with emeralds a little bit but the thing about emeralds is that there, there is an enchant in the game called Outlaw, and using that Outlaw, like on our Morgan Sword, we could set up an auto farm with um, villagers to mine emeralds, basically, or to farm emeralds, and we could get a, a seriously massive amount of emeralds with this enchant. But I did learn recently that the Ensorcelation mod has set this enchant to be disabled, and so we're not able to use it. Um, I actually had to go into the config files uh, for Ensorcelation and set this enabled to true and just to get this enchant to show up. But I've tried numerous different ways to actually get the enchant and it just seems like it's completely disabled and we ha I haven't been able to get it. So if you've been able to get it in the latest version of ATM6, I would really love to hear how you did that, uh, but I haven't been able to. So the other thing that I did here in order to get the honey blocks was I set up these congealers. Now this is um, a pretty nice item that comes with resourceful bees and it doesn't require any power. And so all we have to do is use an exporter here and set the type to fluids and export our honey fluid from refined storage into here and it's going to give us honey blocks. So that's how I was able to get a lot of honey blocks quickly. Um, and if we take a look at this setup here for um, the controller or the uh, centrifuge, I've got an exporter here, which is just exporting the two types of honey blocks that we have available. Now, previously I had this honey in there as well, and that's what I used to get a massive amount of honey pretty quickly to get the honey blocks. And then we've got uh, two importers here. One of the importers is set to fluid so that it will pick up the honey, and then the other importer is set to items so that it will pick up the ores that, the, that this pr uh, processes from the uh, honey blocks. So I know that's a lot of information. And there's a, quite a bit to resourceful bees. But once you have kind of those basic items, um, then you can actually craft the tier 4, uh, if I can spell, tier 4 apiary. And I think I may actually go ahead and craft another one of these right now if I have enough resources Okay, so I don't have enough beeswax. Um, you can see just to craft one of these tier 4 apiaries that it does require a lot of stuff. So this is why we needed the grass and the honey blocks and 23,000 honeycombs um, and also 1,024 beeswax blocks. So this is one of the reasons that um, I, I kind of wanted to, uh, or I had to do kind of go through this process because I wanted to skip through some of these steps. Now, I could go down there and trade with villagers to get some more beeswax, but I want to take a look and see how much beeswax we actually have um, and how much we need. So, because we may be able to get some beeswax um, just by pumping this into our centrifuge. So, let me take a look here at that one more time. It will hit start here. Now, it says we need, uh, we're only missing 671. So, uh, we should be able to get that. Um, let's take a look. Beeswax. We can craft this, but it's going to use this for the craft. So, yeah, I, I'm going to have to put some more um, of this honey into our centrifuge. And that should kind of crank up the speed on uh, getting... So now you can see all this honey's coming in here. We're getting some beeswax coming out. Um, that'll crank up that a little bit. And then we'll take that out and disable it. Um, and then we'll be able to make another uh, tier four apiary. So one thing to note about apiaries is that it is like a multi-block structure. So it does require a very specific shape uh, and the, the size of it needs to be seven uh, long by seven wide and six high. So the inside of it will be five by five by four. And when you set up the uh, apiary, you wanna put it like right here in the middle. Now there's some offset settings where you can adjust this. But if you put it like exactly right here, it will just uh, automatically work. So if we click on the apiary, we can see that um, we've got a couple of bees in here and they do have this kind of lock icon. So we can sort of turn them on and off. 
we can import more, more bees here, or we can export bees. So let's say if I wanted to uh, export this diamond bee here, I can just select him and click export. I may need to lock him first. Um, or maybe he's busy. Um, okay, there we go. Yeah, so I think he was actually depositing his honey, so uh, or his pollen, rather. So that's how you can take the bee out, and then to put it in, you can just import it, and make sure you unlock it when you do that, because it defaults to lock. And then he'll just come in here and do his thing. Now, you'll have to supply the quote-unquote flower that that particular bee uses, and uh, then it will just start doing its thing. Uh, the other thing that we have inside of an apiary is we have two things. We've got an apiary storage, and I've got this gold storage upgrade. So if I take this out, you can see what the default storage is. And if I put this back in, it does help a little bit. There are some higher tiers storage, but we're really not going to need them because we have these really fast uh, importers just pulling the combs out pretty much uh, as, as quick as they pop in. So, um, so onto the apiary breeder. Now, this one is a little more interesting, and um, this is how you can breed your bees. And, and in fact, in order to get the diamond bee and the emerald bee, I had to do quite a bit of breeding uh, in order to, to get these guys. So, And I'll cover that here in just a second. So what you do is uh, when you get the bees that you need to breed, you just put the bee here. Obviously, it's got to be in the jar with the flower that it uses and the other bee that it's going to mate with and its flower. And you got to make sure you've got some empty jars here. And what will happen is when this bee um, breeds, if it's successful, and there's a chance that it may not be, uh, it will just output either an empty jar here or a successful new bee, whatever it was you know, meant to breed. Um, and so that's kind of how that works. Now, I also did put some bee time upgrades in here, or breeding time upgrades. And uh, one breeder upgrade, which basically gives us the ability to, to breed, you know, two types of bees at the same time. Um, so let's take a look real quick at the Beepedia. Now, I do recommend that you craft this because it's going to be essential in terms of, like, figuring out um, the different types of bees that you can um, get and how to get them. Uh, so if we take a look here at the diamond bee, we're going to see uh, exactly how you know, what I had to go through in order to, to get this guy. So if we click on this guy and then click on the breeding, uh, we can see some information here. We can see parents, and the parents of the diamond bee are going to be coal and obsidian. And now these are not bees that you can acquire just randomly in the overworld. You have to breed these bees as well, or you have to breed bees in order to get these bees. So if I click on the coal bee and then the breeding, you can see that that's going to require a blazing bee and a lumber bee. Now, I just happen to know that the lumber bee is a bee that spawns in the overworld. And anytime you see this, where the bees are uh, only bred or their parents are exactly the same type of bee, that usually means that that particular bee is going to be available in the overworld and you'll have to just find it. Um, so the blazing bee also had to be uh, bred. And to get the blazing bee, you have to use a magma bee and a spooky bee. The magma bee is going to be found in the nether, and the spooky bee is pretty commonly found in the overworld. Uh, so I just had to kind of fly around to try to find these guys. And uh, so, you know, after kind of going through this process of getting these different types of bees, and the obsidian bee also had to be acquired, so that takes the lava bee and the water bee, and those two have to be bred together to get the obsidian bee. So once I had these two guys, then I was able to uh, get the diamond bee. And so the emerald bee has a similar process. Uh, so it requires the slimy bee and the gold bee. And to get the gold bee, you have to breed a stoned bee and a quartz bee. And the stoned bee has to be <laughs> acquired by breeding the cob bee and the lava bee. And the lava bee is found in the nether, and the cob bee is found in the overworld. So that's kind of, you know, what you have to do to sort of figure out how to get these bees. And if we take a look in here, I've kind of set up this bee storage because you don't really want to store these bees in your refined storage just because of the uh, NBT data associated with it. Uh, it can cause problems uh, long term. So, uh, so you can see in here, um, somewhere in here, I've got the, uh, so here's the coal bee. So I had to acquire that. Uh, and then we've got the obsidian bee. 
So those two bees allowed me to get the diamond bee, and I did actually make a few extra of these at the time that I was breeding them, just because I wanted to be able to have multiple of these. I uh, did the same thing with the emerald bee. I've got a few of those. Um, and so, yeah, so one, one of the bees that I did kind of have uh, a little bit of trouble finding was this slimy bee right here. And I'm going to show you guys a quick technique um, that you can use to find that particular bee. Uh, so that bee is, um, if we uh, if we can take a look at the JEI real quick for the slimy bee. Uh, slimy bee. There it is. Okay. And we can kind of see some breeding information in here in JEI. So that's also available there. Uh, but it will also tell you the biomes that it's going to spawn in. And that'll be important if you're having trouble finding a particular bee. So I know that the slimy bee can spawn in a swamp. So I set up a place here in the swamp. And what I did was I crafted a golden egg. And if we take a look at that real quick. So it's this guy right here. In order to make the golden egg, you have to craft this nutrition chicken, nutritious chicken feed. It requires these ingredients. You feed this to a chicken, and then you'll get a golden egg. And then all you have to do is basically throw the golden egg on the ground and it will create something called delightful dirt. And what this delightful dirt does is it just spawns everything that would normally spawn in this biome um, just constantly, kind of like a spawner would. And that's why we're seeing kind of all these wild animals here just sort of popping into existence. So that is really cool. And, and, and I was able to get the slimy bee by using this. So I just threw this down. So you can see here a bee just spawned out of this. I think that's actually a zombie. <laughs> And so that's one way that you can try to find bees if you're having trouble finding them. Um, so that's what I had to do to get the slimy bee. So um, I think that's about it. Um, I, one of the other things that I'm planning to do here, of course, is I'm going to keep upgrading these centrifuges as I can. I'll probably go to the diamond one next. And then after that, um, I'm, I'm really going to want to set up uh, our or processing using the scorching heat and high fortune technique that we learned in the last episode, we're going to be able to sort of get a tremendous amount of resources from the ores that we're going to get from using resourceful bees. And as we get higher tiers of the void miner, we're going to need it for that too. And though um, we may not be able to use it for everything from the void miner, but we will uh, be able to use it for most of the ores. Um, so yeah, so the next step for us is going to be trying to set up a, a setup that will allow us to, to basically um, automate that sort of auto smelting process and maximize the number of ingots that we're going to be able to get from our ores. So in order to do that, we're going to have to use a technique from the Mahao mod. So if we take a look at the, oh, I've already got it in my inventory, excuse me. So if we take a look at the Maho book, um, there's a spell in here called Projection. And if we read this, it says, the first use of this scroll memorizes a tool or weapon you're looking at for the whole stack. The second use gives you a copy of the tool with limited durability. So basically what this says is, um, if we use this projection spell on a tool by looking at the tool, and then we use it again, we're going to get a copy of that tool, but it's going to have limited durability. And there's some ways we can get around this by basically applying some enchantments to the tool that we're going to copy before we copy it. And yes, it does actually copy the enchants as well. So if we put indestructible on a netherite pickaxe, for example, and the high fortune enchant, as well as like a high experience boost, uh, and then we duplicate that netherite pickaxe, um, we can just create pretty much an infinite amount of those. And um, it will, we'll also have to put the indestructible enchant on, on the netherite pickaxe as well to sort of negate this limited durability. Um, so that's going to be uh, pretty amazing. And that's going to be a step that we're going to have to do. Uh, but in order to get the items that we want to do this, we're going to need something else. So you always need something else, right? You always need more. Um, so we're going to want to get this mystic code 
And using this mystic code will basically allow us to reuse a scroll, and it won't use up the scroll. And so we're going to want to get this. Now, in order to get this, we're going to have to get some Fey Essence, and I don't have any of that. And getting Fey Essence is going to require us to find some way lines um, that are also part of the Maho mod, and then find some Fey, and then kill the Fey, and then get us some Essence. So uh, that's the process that we're going to be kind of working through today. And I'll walk you guys through that, and um, we'll figure out how to get that done. So let's just get right into that, shall we? So before we get into the Maho mod and um, figure out a way to get some Fey Essence, I wanted to show you guys around a little bit. I made some changes here um, in my off time, and uh, I, I added some creative crafters. And they're not at that expensive for us now because we have a lot of unobtainium. But you can see that they give you a lot more space for your patterns. And they're also very, very fast. They're way faster than any of the other um, crafters. And uh, it's, it's the fastest crafter you can use in the game. And they do hold a lot of patterns, so that's super useful. And you can see that I've got a lot of patterns that I've created here for our auto crafting. Um, so I did add that. The other thing that I added here was this uh, fluid grid. I don't know if um, I've already covered this or not. Um, and uh, But I'll get into some, something else as well. The fluid grid basically allows you to see the fluids that you have stored in your, um, your fluid disk drives. Um, so that's going to be super helpful. Now, the, um, the other thing that I did was in order to get a whole lot of essence, which I needed for our auto enchanting setup, I kind of had to figure out a way to do that. And I came up with this. Um, so basically, all this is is a pedestal with an attacking um, upgrade on it. So if I let me just break this real quick and we'll take a look at that. So it's the auto attacker upgrade. And I also had put my Morgan Sword on it. Now you'll notice there's an enchant on this Morgan Sword called Knowledge of the Ages. And what that does is it basically converts items to experience. So anything that the mob is going to drop, it will basically convert that to experience. Now there's definitely some other mobs we could use here. Um, instead of using villagers, that would give us a much higher uh, experience. So we may wanna doing that if we need to. But to be honest, I don't know that I will because in a very short period of time, I was able to accumulate like over 300 million um, experience or essence from this. And uh, so there's another piece of the puzzle here. So in order to put these guys on, you just put this in your offhand and then you click it on. Now the Morgan sword is on here. And uh, I used this modular router here to basically pick up the uh, experience points that's going to be dropped from this. And I used a, va a vacuum module, and inside the vacuum module, we can take a look at this. It has a vac has an XP vacuum augment. And the nice thing about this is that I'm pretty sure this is the only item in the game that will allow you to choose what type of essence you want to pick up from the world. Um, and so here we can pick um, the different types of experience that are available to us in the game. And so we're going to want to use the industrial foregoing essence uh, because that's what our auto enchanting process uses. So I've just put two of these in here just to make sure that it picks it up fast enough. The other thing that I can that you can do here with a modular router is you can put a tank in here. In this case I've got a black hole tank and this will be able to pick up any fluids or things like XP that are picked up from this um, vacuum module. And then I've got a creative importer here that's going to import that fluid directly into our refined storage and it is set to fluids. So if I turn this on, I can give you guys a quick example of what this looks like. Um, but yeah, because we have our spawner sort of maxed out, it's going to create a lot of experience. And this is going to be really noisy, so I hope you guys will bear with me. But I'm going to go up here and step next to this, and I'm going to turn off the router so that you can see how much experience points we're going to be able to gain in a very short period of time. So keep an eye on my experience bar. It's like we're basically taking a shower and experience. I could just sit here in AFK if I wanted to and get experience points for hours and really crank up my experience. So that is one way that you can use to get 
a, a whole lot of experience points really quickly. And that's so loud. Um, so yeah, so I did do that. And that basically got me a, a whole lot of experience, more than I'm going to need probably. Um, but maybe not. Uh, but it's 336 million that, that we have in here right now. And that's really allowed our enchants to kind of um, take, you know, to take our uh, enchanting up a notch. So now that I've got that, um, I went ahead and got the fortune to 110. And I think I'm going to leave it there because what I'm worried about is that if I get it any higher, when I'm when I set up our auto um, our auto smelting process with that level of fortune, it's going to produce so many items so quickly that we're going to have trouble picking them up. <laughs> and so we're going to have to figure out a way to make sure that we don't find ourselves with thousands and thousands of, of items dropped into the world because that's that's a quick way to crash your server. So we're going to try to avoid that. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out here is that if you use your enchantment library, even with this really high level uh, fortune, you can just store that in there. And if you want to get it back, you can just shift left click and it will give it back to you at that level that you put in. So that's something that's a pretty nice feature. Um, so yeah, so I think uh, that's, oh, there's actually one other thing real quick that I wanted to show you guys. And that is that I, I upgraded our furnaces to unobtainium furnaces. And I'm having a little trouble doing a round robin with this, with our setup. So I may have to modify this because the unobtainium furnace is so fast that it just, there's no reason to round robin. Like it, it, it smelts it like a, like more than a stack at a time. So it, it, it's like picking it up. It's like putting it in and picking it up faster than it can actually hit the next sender module. So I can just give you guys a quick example of this. Let's make some glass. And uh, we do have quite a bit of glass already, but let's just go ahead and craft. Um, we'll just craft like 2000 glass. And we're going to see how fast this thing actually is. So if we take a look in here, look at this. I mean, so 2000 glass done. In like a, a couple of seconds uh yeah so this furnace is just ridiculously fast now i do still want to set up a way to round robin these so i may have to modify this process a little bit just to be able to use it in a way that's going to be more effective for us so that's the only other thing i wanted to show you guys all right guys so in order to find the fey lines and to track down some fey we're going to have to use this mystic eyes of fey sight and in order to craft this guy, we're going to need um, powdered eye, which is basically ender eye that has been crushed uh, using the mortal and pestle, um, mortar and pestle. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. So this guy, uh, so you just kind of do this and you'll get some of this powdered eye. Now I'm going to only craft eight of these because I think maybe that'll be enough, but it may not be. Um, and I think actually I'm going to have to change my keybinds real quick. So what I've got here are these uh, spell cloths. And we have to draw our circles on these spell cloths. OK, now we can just apply the items that it needs. So it's going to need three of these on each. Now we can just right click this spell and pick it up. And now we're going to uh, basically use one of these spells. And I don't remember if you get multiple uses out of it, but I don't think you do. So we're going to use it. Okay, now we can see these uh, ley lines here. And it looks like this is kind of like a central point for one of the ley lines, which is very conveniently close to our base. And what we're going to need to find is some fey. And if we don't find them here, we may have to go to another location. Now, the book actually says that you can attract fey by performing spells from Maho. So the other thing we can do is just kind of maybe try to find another location. So I'm going to look around a little bit and see if I can find some of these fey. And then I will check back in with you guys. All right, guys, so I managed to find a center kind of focal point here. You can see that this one is actually a bit bigger uh, than the other one that's closer to our base. 
And um, what I did here was I set up a couple of life drain boundaries. I also set up um, some gravity boundaries here. And anytime a Fey appears here, it's pretty much just going to instantly die from the, the boundaries. And that is actually what happened. So I was able to get a little bit of Fey Essence. So after killing three, I think each one dropped two. Um, so that's one way that you can kind of try to figure this out. So again, the book says that performing magic um, near kind of the ley line focal point, it will attract them. Something is taking damage. Oh, it was a fish. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Or was it? No, that was actually a phase. See, we got some more... We just got some more essence. So this is a way that you can kind of farm the Fey. They are a little bit slow, even if you can't see them. And we really only needed two of these, but now we've got some extras. And now that that's kind of done, um, I'm just going to go ahead and break these uh, so that the, they don't continue using our mana. So now that we've got the Fey essence, we're going to try to get the item that we need in order to kind of duplicate um, duplicate our tools. So let me just kind of clean up a little bit here. And I think we should be able to craft it like right now. So let's go here. And this is what we want, the Mystic Code. We have everything but these. We'll craft some more of that. And we need some powdered diamond. No problem. And we've got the Mystic Code. Oh boy. All right, so I got the keybinds figured out. So what we have to do here is uh, take two powdered diamond, or we can just check the book real quick. So we're trying to make the projection spell. And so it's gonna take two powdered diamond and two and one powdered quartz. So all we're gonna do is put down our two powdered diamond, one powdered quartz, pick up the spell. Now to add a spell to um, the uh, mystic code, you just hold shift and right click and take it out of your backpack first and uh, shift right click and then drop it in and that's it. So now if we hold Y, we can see that one of these is set to projection. So we can select that and now we have the projection spell ready to go. Okay, so now that we've got our projector spell and uh, we've got our the, the enchantment books that we want. So we've got Scorching Heat, we've got Experience Boost, and we've got Fortune. Uh, what we're going to do now is make a Netherite Pickaxe. So in order to make that, we're going to have to make a Diamond Pickaxe first. And we're going to need one of these. And we're just going to go over to our smithing table and do a quick upgrade. Okay, we got that. Now we're going to want to apply uh, these enchants to this guy. So we're going to want to apply the enchants. Uh, so I think, yeah, we're going to have to use the pedestal anvil to do that. So we know this process already. Um, so we're going to put our enchant here. We're going to put this guy here. And boom, we got it. Nice. Okay. So now we can apply the other enchants. So we're going to put experience boost on it. And then we're going to put fortune. And we're also going to want to get indestructible. So we're going to get a eternal Stella. And we're just going to apply that directly onto our pickaxe, if that works. And that does not appear to work for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting, interesting. Okay, well, I mean, these are the kind of things that pop up. It seems like that used to work, but uh, maybe it doesn't anymore. Maybe you got to put that on first. So, yeah, this is how we learn. Alrighty. Wait. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, so we got to put the scorching heat on first. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Maybe we got to put the indestructible on first. Let's try doing that. All right, we've got Indestructible on there now. Let's see if we can put the Scorching Heat with the Indestructible on it. 
and we've got which one indestructible okay the one i'm holding all right i'm gonna put that there and mm, okay well it looks like maybe they changed some things um i really need to move this <laughs> oh dear uh okay so we might have to do this a different way and maybe they maybe they changed it so you can't do this anymore. I honestly uh, I'm not quite sure. So I guess we'll we're gonna find out. Um, so if the indestructible is on it first, that doesn't work. So let's try to put the scorching heat on it first. Um, let's see if that works. Okay, so we got the scorching heat on there. Now let's grab the indestructible. We're gonna put that there, and we're gonna put that there, and oh no, oh no. Maybe they did change it. Maybe they made it so that you can't can't do this anymore. Oh, never mind. Okay, so that's how you do it. You got to put the scorching heat on first, and then you can put on indestructible and the other enchants. But you have to use the enchantment book, it seems, to get the indestructible on there. Okay, that's fine. No problem. All right, let me just make sure backpack is turned off. And we're going to go ahead and just throw down our pickaxe. And we're going to select the projection spell. And we're going to click on the the pickaxe. And I think it got it. Now look at my inventory. So if I right click on this, look what's happening. We're just getting a bunch of netherite pickaxes duplicated in our inventory. And it has all the enchantments on it. Phew. Um, yeah, that's, that's how we do that. So <laughs> we've got a lot of these now. And as long as I just let these sit in my inventory, <laughs> they're going to, they're going to auto repair because of the indestructible. So we've got a lot of these pickaxes now. Well, what are we going to do with these things? And why do we need so many of them? Well, I'm glad you asked. So what we're going to be doing here, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to be making this breaker module but as you can see it requires that we make a we make it with a pickaxe and so in order to make this guy um we're gonna need a few more of these well let me just get about 20 of those um probably gonna need more than that actually but that'll be a good start so we're gonna make nine of those first so we're gonna make this by doing this, maybe it has to be fully repaired first. Okay, so we've got this guy. So I think it does have to be fully repaired. So we'll have to wait until these are fully repaired, which they're almost there. Okay, so now we can make it. So, and what we're doing here is we're making a breaker module. And um, as you can see, it's got the enchants on it. Um, and so we're going to be able to use that in a router. The cool thing is, is that now anytime I want one of these, I just have to right click, uh, using the mystic code and we get another one. So that's pretty amazing. Okay. Now over here in our sort of, uh, industrial factory building, I've got a, a router set up here. I'm going to want also the block placer, which is going to be this guy. So we're going to need some of these. We're going to want one, two, three, four. OK, so we've got these all pointing down. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to try a test. So let me just grab a block of diamonds. Now, one other thing real quick. So I've got this creative destructor. Here, and this is connected to our refined storage via a cable to this 
network receiver. So anything that this breaks, it's just going to automatically go down uh, and into our refined storage. So let me grab a couple of blocks or stacks of these diamond ore that we've got from our resourceful bees and let's throw this in here. Okay, so I did something wrong. I think I forgot to put this in the down position. We may need to put a filter on these as well. But let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, that was pretty fast. Um, I don't know how many diamonds we're getting out of that, though. All right, so what we're going to do to test this is we're just going to... Um, just going to wire it up to our refined storage and we'll just kind of monitor the diamonds and see what happens now you see all this xp that's coming out here so this is something we're going to want to capture but let's take a look at our diamonds right now oh my goodness so that seems pretty fast but i think it can actually go faster than that but we're getting about a thousand a second from this setup. All right, so I'm just going to take that out for right now. Whew. Um, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Now, we do actually have the mystical agriculture diamonds coming in still, but that's pretty slow. All right, so I think this is the best we're going to be able to do. Um, I haven't been able to figure out how to make this any faster. So we've got our placer modules, we've got our breaker modules. Um, I did add a muffler upgrade so that you don't hear it. And then I also added a sync upgrade because eventually we're going to have kind of a row of these right here. Uh, but I also added another modular router here just to pick up the XP with a advanced black hole tank in it and a speed upgrade. And so, yeah, I think for right now, we can just let these diamonds do their thing. And now you can you can't hear anything. And the experience is being picked up. So we're getting a lot of diamonds per break. Um, and that's going to go through those diamonds pretty quick, I have a feeling. So we got 167,000, 166,000 diamond uh, ore right now, which is pretty crazy. Um, yeah, so... This is kind of how our ore processing setup is going to work. And uh, each of these will, you know, probably have a, a different filter set up for them. And we'll just kind of do, we'll just kind of do a, a row of these down here. Um, and I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll figure out a way to just kind of uh, put the exporter on the top here and we can just kind of really squeeze in a lot more in this area. So it shouldn't be that hard to do. So um, yeah, I'll get started on that and then I will get back to you guys. All right, guys. So I think I got this set up right. Um, I guess we'll find out. So each one of these routers is pretty much set up the same. Uh, we've got the same configuration all across the board here. And we've got our XP um, routers back there. Now I still need to get the black hole tanks in there, which I have crafted five of those. So we're gonna have to put one in each one of these and set these to fluids first. <laughs> All right, I think we're good to go. So now I can just set up these pretty much however I want. So I'll, I think I'll put the diamond here. We'll get that going and we're gonna get emeralds as well. We've got a lot of those emeralds. This is all from Resourceful Bees, by the way. All of this ore in a pretty short period of time. Uh-oh. Okay, now we've got a bit of a problem. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is what can happen. I mean, things things can go wrong when you're dealing with, with this type of thing. So let me look at this. Um, creative destructor. Oh, okay, there we go. I just didn't have, I didn't have it set up right. Okay, so we've got it. We have to make sure this pick up items instead of breaking is set to yes. So there, here we go. Oh. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so we got diamonds there. We got emeralds there. Okay, that's looking good. Now we're also gonna want iron. 
So we got some of that, so we can get that going. And we're gonna want um, whatever other ores we have here. So we've got aluminum, we could do aluminum. Uh, we'll grab the copper and we'll set up the copper here. It'll probably go through that pretty quick. Let's see what else we got here that we can smelt. Now, this would be kind of an interesting experiment. We can try this and see if this works. So this is where I was saying that this probably won't work. Yeah, see that the the block breaker from or the breaker module from uh, modular routers cannot break the uh, all the modium ores. So sad day. On that, um, but that's okay. We'll just go ahead and break these anyway. So, uh, what else do we want to put in there? All right, there we go. Now we've got our ore processing set up, and we're getting anywhere from three to over seventy ingots per break. So that's pretty ridiculous. Um, if we look at these guys, we can see that they're moving up pretty fast. And we're just getting a tremendous amount of material from this. Well, there you have it, guys. That is how you do some insane ore processing right there. And uh, yeah, so now you know how to do it. And it's, I, I don't know, I think there's actually a way to make this faster. But I don't know how, so... Um, but I, I guess for now, this is what we're going to do. And I wonder if... I just want to see what happens if I hit this with time in the bottle. Um, I mean, that'll definitely make it go faster. <laughs> but I wonder if it would be, like, dangerously fast. So let's look at our diamonds now. Okay, yeah, oh my goodness, look at this. Ooh. Wow. That is insane. I'm, I'm afraid to go any faster than that because, yeah, this is what's happening. Like, we're getting some lag now. <laughs> I really need to put some... I, I need to make these redstone activated so that I can turn this off uh, whenever I need to. Uh, because this is kind of dangerous, and it makes me nervous. <laughs> I'm gonna crash my server, and I'll never be able to log into it again. Uh, time to make a backup. Uh, yeah, do backup often. So, oh well, uh, I think that's probably gonna do it for today's episode. Um, I know it's kind of a shorter one, but these are the kind of things that I really wanted to get set up. Um, I think the next thing that I'm going to be working on is probably going to be uh, getting getting more bees set up here. So because we've got uh, all these bees now, um, all these bees in here, there's iron and uh, gold and glowing bee and copper bee and uh, just yeah, all of these different bees. And so we can get ores from all of these just like crazy amount of ores and I, I can make another apiary here which i should be able to do by now in fact i can probably take this out and i wonder how much beeswax we have now uh okay yeah we <laughs> we got enough beeswax so yep um so i want to go take a look at one other thing real quick so let's see how much experience we're getting i think we're probably going to run out of space already just in that short period of time like we had, I mean, we were only using like maybe five, ten percent of this or something, five or ten percent, and now we're almost completely used it up. So, just in that short time that I've been running this, we went from three hundred million to over a billion essence. So this is what I was saying: we're going to be able to make more essence than we can actually hold in refined storage. <laughs> Imagine that running for like a few days. Like there's just there's just no way we're gonna. We're gonna have a serious problem here. So, where are we gonna put all that essence? Um, what we could do is maybe make the um, infinite fluid storage disk. 
Uh, let me look at uh, at extra. So the infinite fluid storages. Now the problem with this is that it has, I think, a two billion limit per item. Um, and then after that, it sort of rolls over, and then I don't know what happens to it. It, it just becomes like a negative number. <laughs> it's just kind of weird. Um, and we do have everything to craft this, and uh, I could actually craft it right now. It'll take a while for it to to craft because there's just a lot of stuff there, but I'll probably go ahead and do that just to be on the safe side so that we don't wind up having experience like spewed out everywhere here because if we don't have any place to store this experience, it's just going to be kind of spewing out everywhere. So yeah, that's something you got to be really careful with with the setup. Um, and that's why I need to actually uh, make this redstone activated and probably put a switch on this so I can turn it off. But uh, yeah, so there you have it, guys. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Really appreciate you. If you enjoyed this content and you find it useful and uh, helpful in your ATM6 adventure, I hope you will click the like button for me. That would help me out a lot. And please do subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thank you guys so much. And uh, another shout out to uh, Kawaii Chimera for uh, showing me this uh, design. Uh, this is Kawaii's design here. I can't take credit for it. So thanks to Kawaii for sharing that in the Discord. And um, now we can all use it. So thank you guys so much. Hope you're doing fantastic out there. I will see you in the next episode. Take care now.